Columbia Morning on News Talk 1400 KFRU. Really have such a great opportunity in this community to learn things and to uh, talk with researchers. And people have gone all over the world with discoveries that make a difference in the uh, discovery of things that would help us to understand where we've come from, maybe help us to understand um, definitely the world in deeper ways around us. The curator's professor of pathology and anatomical sciences in the MU School of Medicine is Carol Ward, and she's in the studio with me. It's nice to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. So um, you you were involved with the, uh, let me read this, the National Museums of Kenya, University of Arkansas, Duke University, and uh, in a discovery of fossilized remains of a tiny monkey. That's right. We work at a site in Kenya that's about 4 million years old. And as we were out finding fossils, one of our team members noticed two teeny, tiny molar teeth, less than half a centimeter long each. And we looked at these under a microscope and realized they were monkey teeth. (laughs) First of all, those would be so easy to miss. Absolutely. We have an incredible uh, group of people who go out in the desert and find fossils. And these people have the most amazing sets of eyes on them. They're much better than I am. I would have missed those, but one of our team members just spotted them sitting amid all the rocks across the surface of the ground. It was so were amazing. you nearby when they said, when they found it? Yes, we were. So we what were... was it? Did they go, aha, or wow, what is this? Or I don't, I'm not sure what I just saw. <laughs> They're all pretty calm about it. <laughs> um, the Robert Moru was the name of the person who found it. And he looked, he looked down and picked it up and said, I think I have some monkey teeth. And so we went over and lo and behold, I would never have expected them to be so small. So is it surprising to find them in Kenya? What was what was the surprise of this? The size or maybe, I don't know, how soon you had an idea of how far back they go? Well, we knew the site was about 4 million years old. And it's where we find the earliest members of our branch of the family tree, which is what we were out looking for in the environment. We find lots of monkeys. We find baboons and other kinds of monkeys. But these are so tiny, mm-hmm. it was really surprising because the only monkeys these small, but they're about the size of bunny rabbits, <laughs> are found in West Africa in swamps today. And we thought they're a dwarfed lineage and really strange. But here they are in the hot, dry Kenyan desert four million years ago. And it really threw us all for a loop. So what do you learn from that? What, do you, what, what does it open up and you say, all right, we have to think about this differently. Now what do we do with this? Well, one of my colleagues said the one thing about new fossils is they always change. They don't look what you look like what you thought they did. And they Mm. always change your minds. We thought, for example, that these little teeny tiny monkeys became really small because they were living a swamp environment really recently. When we find these animals in times and places and environments that we never expected, it really raises bigger questions about how do animals fit in the environment? How can we use fossil animals to tell us about how our climate and our environment changed over time? Mm. So to have these funny, tiny little monkeys in a wrong place at the wrong time <laughs> in the wrong environment really um, makes us rethink a lot of our assumptions about how life has evolved. So were you thinking that those monkeys then lived in a place similar to what it looks like now or that that place looked differently? Very different. The environment mm. at this site, called, it was called Kanapoi, and it's hot, it's dry, it probably had scrubby trees and open woodland, and they're living there with, with giraffes and zebra-like animals and elephants and um, all kinds of an- gerbils, animals that live in open, dry country where little monkeys don't usually uh-huh. live. So we have a lot to learn about this little creature. So they still... Uh, um Monkeys relay, uh, how do I ask this? The same monkey live nowadays or are they extinct? Um, the species of monkey we found mm-hmm. is probably extinct. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, these monkeys are members of uh, monkeys called Gwenins, which are really common monkeys all over Africa. They live in trees. They're about small cat to small dog sized animals. Um, and they have long tails and really brightly different colored faces. There's all kinds of them. But only one kind is really the small. It's called a talipoin, and it lives way in the swamps of Western Africa today. And it has no fossil record until we found these little teeth, uh-huh. which look only like those. So it's our best guess that they're maybe related. 
Interesting. Uh, Dr. Carol Ward is our guest. We're talking about this discovery. How do you say this? Nanopithex, Nanopithecus brownie? Exactly. Perfect. Mm. I like a talipoin monkey instead. So you, so what uh, kind of, what happens after that? I mean, I, I, I so, so many questions about just the process of what you do, what you do. First of all, you go out a long ways from everywhere and just camp out or what? We sure do. Um, our region of Kenya is way up in the northwest part. It's called West Turkana, and it's the desert, and it's hot, and it's dry, and it takes two or three days to drive there. So we have a big mm. team of people, people with different expertise, people who help run our camp. It's a major operation with 25 or 30 people, and we load into vehicles with tents and camping gear, and we drive and drive. Vehicles break down. We keep driving. And <laughs> Do Kenyans go with you? Are they out there? Are they live in villages nearby? The Kenyans, absolutely. In fact, our project, main project leader is uh, Dr. Frederick Chalomanti, who's the head of Earth Sciences at the National Museums of Kenya. And most of us, most of the team are Kenyans. Sometimes I'm the only American in the group with us. So we have everything from scientists to people in the camp who are native Kenyans, which is great. And we set up a big camp, and we camp next to a dry riverbed where we can dig water out hmm. of a water hole, and we go out in the hot sun every day and walk over the landscape, which is desert and gravelly, and some of those pieces of gravel are remains of fossil animals. Oh, wow. So, How long yeah. are you out there? Um, we go for about four or five weeks a year. <laughs> so, How do you get uh, teamed up with, like, Arkansas Duke? And uh, Missouri, uh, you, you, there are experts, I guess, like you that are studying this and have an interest in this. And you just say, OK, we're we've got, uh, you know, united interest. Let's do this together. That's pretty much exactly how it is. Uh, in order to do this kind of work, you need experts in geology. So we know how old the rocks are and where to go. You need experts in all the different kinds of animals that we find. You need expertise of a variety of, of um, fields. And so. We get together as teams of people. Each of us has different interests and expertise. Um, so our team is led by Dr. Monty from Kenya, who really specializes in fossil rodents, but he's also <laughs> an expert field researcher. And me, who studies early human ancestors. And Mike Plovkin from Arkansas, who's an expert on monkey evolution. And we went out there with our team, and we found the fossils. And these are teeth. They're just two little teeth that make up this monkey. And there was... Rich K at Duke is an expert on looking at the anatomy of the teeth to say things about diet. So we each pull our pieces, the our expertise together and pieces of the puzzle to make a whole picture. Still amazes me that, you, first of all, these were seen. But as you said, these are people that say, I, hey, I make my life seeing the small things. And uh, you oh, exactly. never know what you're going to find. So, all right, I'm going to explain this and you can tell me that this is a very simplified version of so any the discovery like that to me and i saw something today i think on cnn.com about how a 23 year old saw a found a skull of something or other words so it's like you have this continuum you have this timeline and you you put discoveries along this line and maybe that line extends further back sometimes or maybe it comes further up but now you discover this small monkey and then you try to place it on a timeline someplace then? Say, okay, here's where it fits. We do. We have a, actually a really good idea of how many million years ago these animals lived because we have a great understanding of the geology of this area. And we can, or we, when I say we, I mean mm -hmm. geologists, can get very precise dates on exactly how old these are. So we go to places where we know how old the animals are. And then we find the remains. And then we look at the anatomy and we say, this looks most like this kind of animal or the other kind of animal and it's similar in this way and different in another way. And from that, we, we know how old they are. And from that, we can piece together a timeline of evolution of all these different Just keep animals. filling in the gaps. That's what you want to do. Exactly. And, 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 um, and every time never, you find uh, one fossil, it creates two that's, gaps, that's right? What I was going to More say. gaps. That's what I was going to say. You, you don't know when you're ever done. Right. Keeps us in a job. So uh, the other question I thought about, you are at your appointment is with the MU School of Medicine. That's correct. So how does this fit into, you know, I would never have guessed these kinds of discoveries would have been related to the School of Medicine in any way. No, I think many people are surprised. Yeah. Well, as paleontologists, we go out and we find fossils, which are bones and teeth of animals. And if we want to understand those animals, how they moved, what they ate, how they lived, 
We need to know what, say, the muscles were and how they attached to the animal, and then what nerves ran the muscles and what blood vessels supplied the muscles and how the animals were put together to, to reconstruct what they did. Hmm. And so we use anatomy every day in our research, and so we're really good at it, and it's a real natural subject for us to teach to other students of whatever interest, medical students, nursing students, physical therapy students, uh. speech pathology students, all these people come through our anatomy courses. And so we're good at teaching anatomy. We know it, we do it well. And that's why we're in the medical school. It's just amazing. I mean, the, the able to put this together and then to make sense out of it. And again, I'm just amazed that two teeth, all of a sudden you find these teeth and say, oh, that, those belong to a monkey. Uh, are you hoping to find other evidence of that monkey in that area? What's yeah. next? You bet we sure are. Um, we're actually working at a different site now. It's about a half a million years younger. <laughs> and so we're interested to see if we find remains of something like that. You know, the smaller the animal is, the smaller the bones are, the harder to see, which is why it's so remarkable we found these at all. So we're hoping to find more. We've been going out each year finding more. We're going to keep it on, keep on the trail and see what we find. Hmm. Wow. I mean, the part of discovery is so, so crucial, isn't it? I mean, that's what, that's what motivates you. You don't know what you're going to discover. I guess you can look for certain things, but then you have to be open to discovering other things because you weren't looking for those teeth. Exactly. You know, and the best thing about doing paleontology is as you're walking out there, you're seeing remains of animals and human ancestors that no one's seen or recognized for millions of years, and you could be the one to see it. So you're walking over these hills, and it's hot, <laughs> and it's dusty, and it's uncomfortable most of the time. And it can be really difficult, but maybe over the next hill you'll find mm. something. Maybe <laughs> under this bush is where it is. Maybe here it is. So it's always exciting, and but, it keeps you going through the heat. But most of the days you're never going to find that. That's right. Teams go for years and even decades without significant discoveries. We've been really lucky. We have a great team. We're in a great place. And, it, you know, you don't always find what you're looking for, and that is in some ways even more fun than uh -huh. finding what you th thought you were going to find. Wow. Um, anything else you want to leave us with? I think this is fascinating. Oh, oh it's fun. And you know, it beats working. I'd have to have a real <laughs> job if I didn't do this. I would think so. <laughs> uh, Carol Ward is Curator's Professor of Pathology and Anatomical Sciences, MU School of Medicine, talking about a recent discovery of uh, fossilized remains of a tiny monkey in Kenya 4.2 million years ago. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. This is great fun. It's News Talk 1400 KFRU.